everybody, it's Steve again. Um, today, we are going to dive into session two of CPT therapy for PTSD. Uh, again, this is focused, my focus is on um, providing this from a viewpoint of a veteran who's been through this and who has finished and completed the CPT process. Uh, again, my PTSD is not gone. My depression is not gone, but I have coping mechanisms now and that really does help a lot. And I know it sounds a little bit strange, but I, they really do help a lot. So uh, let's break out into uh, session two here. In session one, you know, we're, we're building on that foundation of session one where you got to know your therapist, you got to know kind of what PTSD is, what CPT is. Now we're going to start doing the work. Um, and, and we're going to really start doing a lot of the work that you're going to be doing for the rest of the time that you're going through CPT. So, uh, again, I have the overview sheets. Session two is called examining the impact of trauma. Um, there are several things that you have to do for, for session two. So I'm going to jump into those. They're also outlined in the description below. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is review the homework assignment. And if you remember, the homework assignment that you had before was to go out and write down uh, all of your feelings, uh, things that reminded you of the traumatic event. Sorry, I'm looking through my papers. Things that reminded you of your traumatic event and how it made you feel. Um, how it made you feel. You haven't recounted the entire event yet, but you've talked about, hey, this triggered memory this is how it made me feel. This triggered a memory. This is how it made me feel. So you're going to review all of that. And, and just uh, another, you know, simple warning for you is quite honestly, once you start writing those things down, it's difficult to look at them. I know that I've been there. I know exactly what that feels like. Um, I don't know exactly your situation, but I know what it felt like for my situation. And um, going through that was was very uh, eye-opening for me, quite honestly. And I thought it was hard to write those things down. Then I came into session two, <clears throat> and my therapist asked me to read each one aloud. And that took every ounce of strength that I had, quite honestly. Uh, it was a very difficult thing to do, um, but you know, I, I got it done and did pushed my way through it. We reviewed a couple of those things that he stopped me along the way and asked me questions about specific items. Hey, if this made you feel this way, is that a true statement or is that just something that you want to be a true statement or you think, you know, could have been a possibility instead of what actually, you know, happened. Uh, separating emotion from fact. Uh, there's a lot of that in this, in this opening area. So, <clears throat> that's the first thing you do in session two. The second thing you do will be the introduction to the trauma account. Okay. And that is where you will narrate the trauma account. Now, in my case, I was asked to write it and I wrote out my trauma account. I was also asked to read it. And again, just like reading those experiences, those feelings, those, how it's affected you reading a rewriting of that entire traumatic event that caused your PTSD, man, that's that's a tough gig to read it out loud. Um, I I had some I had some big uh, struggles doing that. So, and you know, all things being equal, it broke me down a little bit during that session. So, you know, it's it, it's part of you have to address the problem before you can fix it. Right, it's kind of that whole 12, 12 steps things for, for AA. Um, you have to first say, hey, I'm an alcoholic before you can start fixing anything like that. So um, just remember that as you're writing these things down and you're reading them aloud and it's very difficult to do, it's really setting the stage for moving forward. All right, so the next thing is we're gonna process the trauma account. So this is basically identifying what's happening with you while you're reading back this trauma account. Like if you start to really get choked up or you start to, 
uh, fade down in your talking. The therapist is going to notice that. The counselor is going to notice that. They're going to try and address that with you and help you, you know, work through that because that's really their goal. They're not successful unless you're successful getting through this program, quite honestly. So it's, it's really important to them that you go in full vulnerable and just go ahead and, and do everything that's, that's asked of you at this point. So, um, again, hand in hand with the intro we just covered, uh, it says, Hey, you know, here's what you're going through. The therapist will stop you now and then and say, Hey, uh, let me ask you this. Let me ask you that. Now, how did that make you feel? What about this? Um, is this connected? Is this truth or is this, is this fact or is this fiction? Um, because a lot of times with PTSD, uh, at least in my experience and in the experience of those that I know that have gone through things like this, uh, there's a little bit of fiction that enters into your head. Like, man, I should have. Well, I should have is fiction. I mean, you can't now. It's it's done. It's over, right? And I should have is is a is a morale killer, quite honestly, a personal morale killer. And I struggle with it. I, I struggled for a very long time with I should have. Um, I still wish I could have. <coughs> wish I could have. I, I can, you know, wish in one hand and poop in the other. I, I don't know a better way to say it, right? That's just the way it is. Um, you can wish all day long, but the wish isn't going to necessarily come true. You can't go backwards in time. So we'll leave that where it is. Next is challenging stuck points. <coughs> I'm going to show you my stuck point log. Okay. Um, this is one of the handouts for session two. It's a stuck point log where the, the, my counselor walked me through and said, okay, let's talk about things that, you know, that go through your head. Let's talk about what you feel about this event. And the first one was, it was a freak accident. Now we also mentioned on here, written down, I see it says fact. That's a fact. It was a freak accident. There's nothing that, you know, was purposeful in that, right? Um, then there was, if I was in charge, there would have been at least one survivor. There would have been at least one person that came out of this well. That's, that's guilt talking. So you really start to, to work through and understand what your stuck points are. And you have this stuck point log here. Um, one of the things that helps a lot with the stuck points to understand um, what you're doing with them is they give you this handout 6.4 stuck point help sheet and it helps you identify what a stuck point is what a stuck point is a stuck point is a thought that you have that keep you from recovering basically um you know uh it's my fault How, how's that going to help you recover if it wasn't your fault how's that going to help you recover if it was your fault how's that going to help you recover it's not that ad admission, one thing, but dwelling in it is another. So those are stuck points, right? And then we've also got, this one's going to be the funnest one to talk to you about because I, I don't know how well I feel about sharing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is a feelings wheel, which I never thought that I would say uh, on video, but it's a feelings wheel. And what it does is it takes the, the feelings that you're having and narrows it from the outside in to a core set of true feelings, right? So one of them is hopeless. Well, hopeless really is tied with fatigue and tired, which is that delves into depression and depression delves down into sadness. And, and sadness is the true, the true foundational feelings. Uh, feelings wheel is what it's called. Uh, if you want to look into it, I enjoyed it because it gave me a little bit of an education, but I put it aside after that, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> then we have the identifying emotions. Um, you get to identify the emotions that you're having and, you know, how, how far out on these spokes of this wheel are you? Uh, and then we have... Like I said before, the stuck point log, this is a blank one. 
This is what you'll get from your therapist and you'll start writing your stuck points down. Sometimes the therapist will help you and write them down for you like during the session and then have you go home and during part of your homework build onto that. Uh, it's really important to do that. So again, that's the challenging stuck points area, right? Then you have the cognitive restructuring, which is reframing your thoughts and, and putting them into the correct context. Because a lot of times what happens is people think that they're speaking to themselves facts and that those facts are going to drive their behavior, but they don't understand that <clears throat> the consequences of that driven behavior, quite honestly. Um, that behavior may be something that's really just beating you up. Um, you're, you're taking, you know, bad thoughts and then trying to encourage you. Therapist will try and encourage you to get some more positive thoughts put in there, quite honestly. And you need to do that. You need to find a way to, okay, this was a negative event, right? This was, this couldn't have been any worse. Worst thing that ever happened in my life. Worst thing ever but it's in the past and I can't change it. So that's, that's kind of that cognitive restructuring, starting to get you to think a little bit about how you get through it and how you change that uh, thought process. So, and then we have a discussion of emotional responses. We talked through that with the feelings wheel and the emotional response, emotions handout uh, that I was talking about. Um, that's basically, you know, gonna validate your responses um, help you understand your responses. Like when I uh, go to the airport, I sweat profusely, go walking in the door, and I get mad at myself because I got no reason to be doing that, quite honestly. So then I get more frustrated. Then I get self-conscious, and I get self-conscious because I'm sweating to death walking through security at TSA. Imagine this, big old dude, 6'3", 300 pounds, walking through security sweating to death like he's doing something nefarious and I'm not I'm just having that anxiety kill me at that point and um <clears throat> it it's it can be a challenge sometimes so that's just one of the things that happens to me and then we're going to talk about your homework um that's the next part of the session so your homework assignment's going to be a traumatic account writing you're going to write out that detailed traumatic account I know you just narrated it now you're gonna go home and during the week, you're gonna write it out. And when you come back for session three, you're gonna read it aloud. And it's gonna suck just as bad as you think it could suck, quite honestly. Um, but it'll, it, it'll help you process it. There's, it'll all start clicking together in a few more sessions. And then there's the challenging stuck points reflection. So we took our stuck point log the log sheet where we wrote down all these stuck points. Let me get out my other one that actually has something on it. And we'll talk through that. Let's see if I can find it in this pile real quick. There we go. So there's my stuck point log. It's got all these entries on there. Um, you're gonna take that and you're gonna turn it into what's called an ABC sheet, right? ABC sheet. And basically you're gonna take it, you're gonna figure out what the activating event is. That's the A your belief or your stuck point, which is the B, and the consequence of that stuck point, which is a C. Um, in, in, in my case, it's, you know, flying somewhere. Um, my belief and stuck point was there's an expectation that there was gonna be a bad accident again. There's just that expectation was there. That's the whole, um, that's the whole I'm getting stressed out thing. And the consequence of that is major anxiety to the point of where I'm sweating, walking through TSA security, trying not to look like a criminal into an airport. I know, it seems crazy. But um, after I wrote those out, then you write down, are my thoughts in column B realistic or helpful? Um, it is realistic. Um, I think it's absolutely realistic what I was concerned for. It's not helpful, but it's realistic. And then what can I tell myself on such occasions in the future? That's where you find a different way to take that cognitive restructuring and really start pointing it to a different way of thinking about things. And then I've got another one you can see um, right there. There were a lot of these that I went through and you're going to do a lot of stuck point processing. So get ready for this to be extremely repetitive at this point. Um, I wrote 
I, I probably wrote seven or eight of those, maybe eight, maybe one a day for seven days between, you know, between sessions or six days between the sessions and um, one for each day. It, it can get kind of difficult, but don't get wrapped around the axle on it, right? Don't, don't try and write out a novel about what happened. You saw how short my answers were on these ABC sheets, right? So very short answers. Didn't even use all the lines. Didn't even write an answer to that one, but I was very short in my answers. And it, short and concise is gonna be the best thing for you. Um, you can really get wrapped around it, quite honestly, if you try and stay with it too long. But that is session two. Uh, hopefully this is helpful to you. If it is, hit the like button, thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, thumbs down button. I'm good with that. Um, honest feedback is always a good thing. So uh, if you feel like leaving a comment, leave a comment. Please like and subscribe or just subscribe. Or if you don't like it, eh, put that thumbs down. We'll get past that. You know, uh, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I, I need to make sure what I'm doing is really affecting somebody in a positive manner. Uh, that's my own personal satisfaction that I'm getting from this is really helping somebody out. I'm hoping that, you know, that through these videos that I can help just one veteran, just one. I'd be happy with just one. I'd be super happy with more than one. But if just one veteran gets something good out of this or one, one person that's going through something that could possibly end up going through CPT therapy with a counselor, if any of that happens, if any of that goes on and I'm able to help someone, I think it's, it's absolutely worth all my time going through this. All right. Session three is next week. We'll see you then. Take care.